right, everybody, how's it going? Woo! It is the uh, second lecture in this video cast series I like to call The History of the United States of the America. That's right, you have to emphasize and accent the the. Um, I want to start out today talking about the 13 colonies. The 13 colonies are these over here, these, these things these pieces of land that were all settled by the British. Um, and they all kind of developed their own cultures. Uh, and they all eventually would become the first 13 of the United States of the America. Now, there's no the in there. United States of America. Um, but in all seriousness, you have the New England colonies, uh, and they came because of religious freedom. Uh, or the settlers that settled the New England colonies, and I really got to stay on task here. Uh, the Southern colonies, uh, also known as the plantation colonies, these individuals settled these Southern colonies because of money. Uh, they were looking for material wealth and riches. And the middle colonies, uh, New York, Pennsylvania, uh, Maryland, New Jersey, Delaware, they came for various reasons. I mean, and again, some were like the um, like the southern colonies who came for material wealth and some were looking for religious freedom and you know they were just kind of all over the map and these are generalizations in you know in a sense because people came to these colonies for many 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 different reasons but if you look at them as a whole I would say uh, you associate with plantation colonies with plantations and those individuals who settled there came for money. You associate the New England colonies uh, with people who came there for religious purposes. And so as a result, these different sections develop their own specific cultures that would eventually result in the cultures that are practiced there today and would eventually result in contributing to an American culture. People ask me all the time, you know, what is American culture? That's something we'll definitely talk about in class. What is that? What does that mean, especially in the 21st century? What was it then and how does it relate to what it is now? I don't know. It's a good question. Um, but I'll start with the British and because the British are the ones that, that who, who colonize these areas. Um, let me go back to this slide, and I, I'm sorry if I jump all over the place. Uh, the British, um, there was a shift in the world powers in, in 1588 when the British defeated the Spanish Armada, this fleet of ships that was supposedly unstoppable. And because of this, the shift of European power went from the Spanish to the British. So it was the Spanish, they were the most powerful country in the world, Spain. This, as a result of the Spanish Armada being defeated by the British, uh, shifted from Spain to Great Britain. So let me just talk about the British colonies. The first successful one was in Jamestown, 1607. And in 1607, Jamestown, you know, is in Virginia, uh, or was in Virginia, 1607. And, and the question is, you know, why did the Jamestown settlers go to the New World? Why did they want to experience something different apart from what they had in Britain? And the simple reason was they wanted to get rich. They were looking for riches. They were looking for gold, in a sense. I mean, they literally thought that once they landed in the New World, no matter what, they would find gold. And as we know, gold is not all over the Americas. Um, let me just talk about uh, joint stock companies for a second. These were private companies looking to explore to make a profit. And the idea was if a company got a charter from the British government, uh, they enjoyed protection and rights in the New World as if they were, a, you know, in Great Britain. So a charter, I think a, a charter is a very key word here. It's like, you know, if you got a charter and you settled in Great Britain, it was like you got a home away from home. You got all those same rights from the British government, protection from the British government, but you were all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. 
So that's the idea. The idea was to get a charter and you would be supported, supported and you would have rights from Great Britain, even though you were settling somewhere else. That was essentially the way to establish colonies. But, uh, you know, we talked about, we just, I just mentioned why the, the Jamestown settlers came. And the reason was to get rich, but when they, what they found when they got there was just terrible. I mean, you found, essentially what they found was no gold, number one. And number two, they struggled to survive. I mean, they had, you had mosquitoes, starvation, disease. They didn't know how to hunt. And they were looking for gold instead of looking for sustenance, for food, for crying out loud. So this got to such a point. I mean, there are all kinds of awful stories about the first Jamestown settlers. Eventually, eventually Jamestown would grow and grow and they would figure out a way to survive. But initially, the first Jamestown settlers did not survive whatsoever. They ate whatever they could find. And they weren't looking to grow food, even though you could definitely grow food in Virginia. So, I mean, they ate cats, whatever they could find, rats, mice. They dug up human remains to eat. Like it says right here, a man was once convicted of murder in the Jamestown colony after he killed, he salted, keep in mind, and ate his wife. So cannibalism happened in the first colonies. Uh, I mean, just, just to stay alive. Um, and out of the 9,000, I mean, this is a statistic, right? right here out of just to show how deadly it was to be a jamestown settler out of the nine thousand original settlers only 1200 survived so you're looking at 70 uh, let me do the math 7800 of them perished uh, and then of course there was the other threat besides starvation and disease which was the native americans which and the natives didn't want them there let's let's be honest uh these the Native Americans, um, you know, conflicted in a number of ways with the settlers because, you know, what the natives had, the settlers wanted, namely food. Uh, so these settlers would try to steal from the natives. They would raid the uh, Indians' food supply. Um, and this would result in wars. Uh, the anglo powhatan War was, was one that was very important, one was very key. Uh, and very deadly as well. But there were many, many wars and many conflicts over the years uh, between American Indians and English colonists. And it was clear from that time that the colonists and the Indians could not coexist with each other. Uh, and as a result, you know, by 1685, because, I mean, the Powhatan, or the Powhatan, I always forget how to say this, Powhatan, I think it is, the Powhatan essentially were completely extinct by 1685. And this was a very key, very powerful Indian tribe. Um, and of course, because the colonists kept pouring in after they learned how to survive, uh, many of the rest of the Indian tribes were forced to move west, a process that would continue throughout American history. Um, to the point where, I mean, this, this process of extinction and migration, forced migration, mind you, uh, is a key theme, theme that would continue all the way until, you know, today where the Native American population, the American Indian population is less than 1%. The, Na or the European explorers, the English explorers, the British explorers, whatever you want to call them. England, let me make one thing clear. England and Britain, when I say these two things, they mean the same thing. But anyway, uh, these settlers, colonists, viewed the American Indians uh, in three different ways. Or the, I guess these were three ways that, um, that destroyed the American Indians. Number one, the colonists viewed them as disposable. Like, they, didn't, they weren't respected. It was like, okay, well, we have land here. We don't care if American Indians or other people are on this land. We're going to get rid of them. It's our land. We found it. 
So the American Indian to the colonist, to the European, was diso disposable. Number two, the other thing that was destroyed, that, that destroyed the American Indian, was disease. And we've already talked about that. Overall, kicked, uh, killed, disease killed about a half of the Native American population. And then, very key is a disorganization. The fact that these Indian tribes were tribes unto themselves and did not unite uh, caused them to be disorganized. And we know that there's strength in numbers. But if you have disorganization, if you have fragmentation between the tribes, you are not going to have those numbers that it takes to um, fight against the Europeans. So these are three specific reasons why the Native Americans uh, perished, why the, uh, the Europeans disposed of them. Um, the major crop in the uh, plantation colonies, and again, Jamestown was the first, but we're talking about the future states of South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Georgia. But the major crop back then, again, this would change over time, was tobacco. And once the Europeans got a hold of tobacco, there was no turning back. They loved tobacco. They couldn't get enough of tobacco. And tobacco was this crop that ruined the soil. So the idea was, okay, so we're going to plant this crop of tobacco. And afterwards, it was more difficult. After the crop was harvest, harvested, it was more difficult to grow a new crop on that same patch of land. So this caused the colonists to consistently move to find more land to grow new tobacco. And so the colonists would consistently move west. They would try to move west in search of more land they could grow more tobacco on. And this caused a complete hunger for land because they needed more tobacco. That's the thing. So they continued to move west. And as they continued to move west, they would encounter more Indians. And that would result in more conflict. So, um, and then the other consequence of this, of course, was the demand of slaves. And I, I'm going to get into just one specific reason why uh, European colonists wanted to import African slaves, or slaves from Africa. And that is because um, the Native American population just died off too quickly and were defeated too easily. And, it, and chiefly it was from disease. Now the African people who had encountered the Europeans, who had interacted with them over centuries, I mean there was that cultural diffusion, where they were immune to some of these diseases that killed the Native Americans. So if you imported African people, they were more likely to survive on plantations. And so that's why the Europeans traded for African slaves with African kingdoms and brought them to the New World and enslaved them, which in turn you know, uh, led to one of the greatest crimes against humanity um, in world history, which was, in, which was slavery, human slavery. And this, of course, in, in the Americas would turn to slavery based on race, which is another thing that the United States would have to, or the Americas, the Europeans, and then later the United States would have to grapple with, the United States would have to grapple with this for the rest of their history. But that's all I have to say today. I mean, obviously I could say more on this, and I will say more, but that's for another time. Uh, at 14 minutes, I am going to, these are a few review questions. Um, you might want to check these out and uh, take a picture of these and answer them. They could very well be quiz questions in the future or if I assign this video. Um, chances are the quiz that I give will be these particular questions. But anyway, uh, I hope you all are doing well and I am signing off. See you later.